Waitress hands me my coffee. I take it, thank her, then head out of the coffee shop with my drink. I walk out of the cafe. I see a woman running towards me. She's running towards me like she's Alice and Felix. As I take a closer look, I see that the woman is wearing a wedding dress. She also appears to have mascara running down her face. He's clearly having a hard time. The woman continues to run towards me. Pensioner comes out of a shop and is knocked down by the woman, but she carries on running. She's not aware of her surroundings. I have to do something. This woman will seriously injure someone. The retiree is helped to his feet. He looks to be okay. Put my hands up to get the woman to slow down. The woman doesn't listen. She keeps running towards me. Finally, after a beat, forced to grab her and stop her from running further. Fall to the ground. The woman looks furious. Hey, what the hell is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Look behind you. Look at the carnage you've caused. The woman doesn't look behind her. She's ready to run off again. And block her exit. What now, Dick? You have to stop running. Why does it matter to you? It matters because you've just knocked down a pensioner. Did I? Eddie looks behind her. Retiree flicks his middle finger at her and walks off, looking angry. I'd say you don't deserve that, but then I'd be lying my ass off. I didn't see him. Would you when you have mascara tears blocking your eye line? Anyway, excuse me. Heidi tries to walk past me. Block her exit. Where are you going? My car's over there. I could take you where you need to go. You're a stranger. Yeah, but my friends say I'm like Dominic Toretto when it comes to my driving skills, so you can rest assured I'll get you where you need to go in one piece. I'm okay, but thanks for the offer. Are you running late for your wedding? Yeah. I'm gonna go. Lady, I'm trying to help you. I'm sure your future husband is worried sick about you. I would be if I were him. That dick doesn't care about me. Okay. What makes you say that? I'm sorry. You're a stranger. I don't make a habit of talking to strangers. And I understand that. Clearly, you're someone who needs a friend to talk to. Will you just leave me alone? I'm trying to help you. I don't need your help. Sure? Because it seems like you don't. Jerk. Let me drive you where you need to go. Promise I won't charge you. Please? No. In FYI, I have plenty of friends. Now, excuse me. It, you're alone on the street with tears swimming around your eyes. Look, I need to go. Let me go. Where? It's none of your fucking business, okay? Leave me the fuck alone. Right. Just trying to help. I start walking off. Wait. I'm sorry. Stop walking. Turn around. I'm Will Matlock. Can I buy you coffee? I'm Heidi McGuire. I can't go to that coffee shop. People might judge me. Okay. How about I take you to my home? I live five minutes from here. Heidi shakes her head can have somewhere to chill and take a breath. And then maybe, if you want, if there's no pressure whatsoever, you can tell me what's been going on. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I promise, I won't. I don't really know you. You could be a murderer for all I know. I live with my brother, and he's a police officer. So I can phone him now if you'd like and you can speak to him. You do seem trustworthy. Take out my phone and call my brother Maddox. Maddox, are you at home right now? It's okay. I trust you. I hang up. Anyway, if you still don't, rest assured that my brother will be at my home with us so it won't be uncomfortable for you. Thank you. Thank you for being so lovely to me. Not a lot of people would have been this kind to me. You're one in a million. You're more than welcome. Now, I heard that rain's forecast for today, and there are clouds... 
So let's get you out of here before nature's bath comes down on us. Lead Heidi to my car. I open the door and she enters and sits. I sit down and start the car. Drive off. Open the door. I lead Heidi into the living room. Wow, this is a beautiful apartment. It was, and it was all mine. What do you mean? Three months ago, my sister moved in. My sister went on to meet her husband, and then three days ago, she moved out after she married him. However, a day later, my brother Maddox walks in, wearing kimono. Well, Diane ate all your candy, so please don't blame her. She has an insatiable appetite for me, and that makes her hungry. This jerk moved in. And, uh, little note, I've got no money to pay rent this month, so, uh, something to deal with there. Glare at him. Turns his attention to Heidi. Hi, I'm Maddox, and I am not single. I mean, you're pretty, but there will never be a thing between us. I just wanted to make that clear for you. Goodbye. Maddox walks away, goes into his bedroom and shuts the door behind him. That's my brother Maddox. He's a... weirdo. Mm, a weirdo who I like a lot. Please get to know him further, because that notion will die away. I promise. You really do have a lovely apartment. Thank you. Let me show you around. Lead Heidi to the bathroom. This is the bathroom. I open the door. Where Maddox's new girlfriend is showering. Great. And she's waving at me. So that's enough of that. I close the door. I love this whole dynamic for you. Well, I'm not laughing. Heidi's checking out the pictures on the wall. Your family seem close. Don't be fooled by the pictures on the wall. We're not close. We hate each other like Americans hate Canadians. I think you'll find it's not hatred. It's just rivalry. If you say so. Lead Heidi to a bedroom door. This is my sister's old room. I think she left some clothes in here if you want to shower and change out of your clothes. Oh, thanks. What's your favorite pizza? You know you don't have to feed me, Will. I do, if you're going to be a guest at my house. Which toppings would you like? Mmm, ham and pineapple. Devil's food. Hey, could you not knock it? It's lush. Whatever. You won't know what hit you until you've tried it. We have a pizzeria down the road. The food should be here by the time you've showered and changed out of your clothes. Thank you, Will. You're great. You're more than welcome. I walk out of the room and close the door take the pizza from the delivery driver and shut the door. I walk into the living room to find Maddox next to Heidi. So, why did you jilt your fiancé? Shut up, Maddox. None of our business. Feel free to ignore him. It's okay. I can answer him. Put a pizza box in front of Heidi. He opens it and smiles. Bro, where's my pizza? You can share mine. You want me to eat pineapple pizza? Yeah, I'd rather headbutt a brick wall than eat that crap. Language, please. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's okay. I have teenage brothers with similar behavior patterns as Maddox. So, are we hearing this story or what? You're about a second away from getting a slap unless you pipe down. All right, dick. David, my ex, is a banker. We've dated for three years. He proposed five months ago. He's handsome, rich... Did I say handsome? Because he is. Anyway. You got cold feet. Yes and no. Well, then what happened? Hey, bro, can I get a slice of that pepperoni? How about a please? Uh, please? Uh, no. Buy your own. Anyway, about three weeks ago, I went to see my parents. I was getting nervous about my forthcoming wedding. And let me guess. Your anxiety levels went through the roof. Yep. It was building up. I knew the exact reason why, too. 
It was to do with marrying David. So you wanted to find a way to eliminate your doubts and concerns. Exactly. I wanted to find out if I could still marry David without, you know... Without you being in love with him. So I went to my parents. I saw how they worked together. I listened to how they spoke to each other. I saw the little touches they gave each other. I saw the love they shared and had for each other. And then what? And my parents worked as one to do everything, including chores. Dad would always say something encouraging to my mom to make her feel good about herself. Aww. People, feed me right now. My dad would always lavish my mom with praise and love. I'm sure this David person did the same thing with you, too. He'd be mad not to. The hell he did. <laughs> Loser. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, Heidi. My husband-to-be was never like my dad was to my mom. I don't think he was even capable of being nice. Huh, so he's kind of like Will here. You see, he's a cutthroat banker. He's a self-made man who only cares about money. So when it comes to appreciating me... He fails every test you can give him. Hence, you had doubts. Exactly. I realized I had to get out of that relationship or end up with a life full of regrets. Well, he made a great decision to run while you still could. So, well done. Heidi... Is there no way to save your relationship? Have you tried counseling? I've tried to get David to see a relationship counselor for months, but he's always made an excuse that he was busy. If David cared, he would have gone to one of those sessions with me. What a jerk. Watch it, bud. We're impartial in this. Well, the guy is. Why the hell would anyone throw away a nice girl like this? He's actually right. It's madness. <laughs> Look. I don't think I care enough about David to want to try again with him. Our whole relationship was one big, giant mistake. I'm over him. It's over. Well, you seem in good spirits about your decision to leave David. Thank you. I just don't love him. And if there's no love in a relationship, it won't end up anywhere. That's a fact. Hmm. Maddox, word please. All right. He wants to talk about you behind your back, so... Don't worry, I'll tell you everything he says about you. Scout's honor. <laughs> We're not going to talk about you. It's okay if you are. Oh, well, we totally are. Just move your ass over here. X follows me to my bedroom. Close the door. X looks surprised as he sits on my bed, listening to me. You're serious about this, aren't you? You want Heidi to move in with us. Look, it's only for a while until she finds her feet again. Well, what if her fiancé looks for her, and then finds her here, and then kicks her ass? I mean, I'm not going to defend you. I'd rather enjoy the show with some popcorn. You know how it is. Stop being immature. That won't happen. Are you sure? From what I've heard, this dude kind of sounds like a mafia boss. He's a banker jerk. Exactly. Sure. I mean, he's a banker. He is. Just in case he isn't, I'll get a more secure lock on the door. Wimp. So, should we do it? There's a knock on the door. I open to find Heidi standing there. Sorry, I couldn't help but eavesdrop. Are you sure I can live here with you guys? It would help me out. Do you want this? What about your family? They might be worried sick. I'll let them know I'm okay later. You'll be able to stay as long as you need. You won't have to pay rent. Ooh, can't get in on that deal? Glare at Maddox. Smiles and walks off. Thank you for offering me no rent payments. But I have a job, so I can pay my way. Are you sure? I don't want to put any more pressure on you than I already have. Stop fretting. I'm okay. I'm not that fragile. I think. Most people would say I am just looking at me, but... Uh... Smile. I'm glad that you think you're not fragile. When do you think you'll be able to head home to get a change of clothes and other items you might need? A while yet. I'm not quite ready to face David. He's going to be furious with me. Well, don't you dare worry about that now. Get on the couch, put on friends, relax your mind, and here, take out my wallet. 
hand Heidi my bank card. What's this for? I want you to buy anything to make yourself feel comfortable here. You really don't have to do that. I insist. There's no limit on that card, so buy anything you need. Heidi takes the bank card. Thank you, Will. You don't know how much your kindness means to me. I know if the roles were reversed, you'd do the same for me. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. But thanks, anyway. Heidi walks away. You devil woman. <laughs> That's what I am. Heidi <laughs> is cooking when Maddox and I enter. Heidi, we're back from the gym. Maddox lied about twisting something, so we left early, but we're back anyway. Hey, that smells so good. Heidi turns around from the stove. I'm making you both pork chops with a side dish of mashed potatoes and greens. Ooh, damn, my mouth is watering. Please wash your hands while I plate up your food. Maddox quickly disappears. You didn't have to do this. I had to. You've welcomed me into your home. You've been super friendly to me when God knows I don't deserve it. And, well... And he stops talking to look away. What? Tell me. I really like you, Will. You're engaged to be married. Not like that. I meant I like you as a friend likes another friend. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> panic is over. Although, saying that your generosity in offering me a place to say has won my affections, I see you differently now. Okay. Weird. But thanks. Addix enters. Eddie starts to plate the food. Oh, I'm all washed up. Where's my food? Smack Maddox on the arm. Ow! What'd I say wrong? Show her some respect. She's not a 1950s housewife you can order around. Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> Eddie puts down the two plates of food in front of Maddox and me. Enjoy. Thanks. If you'll excuse me, I need to call my mom and dad to tell them where I am. Eddie exits. She's great, isn't she? I have no opinion on that. Uh-oh. I know what that means. Don't start, okay? You like her. No, you love her. I don't. We're friends. That's all. <laughs> Bro, this is kind of dangerous territory. I mean, she was about to marry her fiancé today. Yeah, well, who says anything has to happen today? Friends now, so that's what we'll be for now, and then later, down the road... You want to Lego build it up until she decides that she wants more to happen. Uh, maybe. Well, do you think Heidi wants more? I've got to roll the dice and hope for the best. I owe it to myself to at least try. I don't know, bro. I only see future heartache for you. Whatever. Eddie enters with a phone. Well, my mom was effing and jeffing and my dad couldn't stop crying. Took it that bad, huh? Yep. I could call them later and speak on your behalf if you'd like. No, you've done more than enough already. Okay. Well, if you change your mind, just let me know. Now, I have to go to work. I exit. So, how single is your brother? What? Oh, you like him. No, I just want to know if he's single. Yeah, he's single. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Eddie gets up and exits. It's after midnight. I've been cooking all night at my restaurant. Now I'm home to find Heidi on the couch, crying her eyes out. Naturally, I rush over to her. Hey, sweetie, what's the matter? It was all a lie. Heidi's a blubbering mess. What was? My relationship with David. What makes you say that? I say it because my mom just called to say that David has revealed he was cheating on me with my cousin, Marie. <sighs> Shit.
There's more to come on The Runaway Bride, so please subscribe to That Love Podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And also, help us by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We also love for you to review us on Apple Podcasts. By doing this, you help us expand our reach to new listeners. We're also active on Twitter at That Love Pod, so drop us a message there. We'd love to hear from you. And before we sign off, if you love the podcast, please share it with family and friends. Thank you.